Hello, AJ. How are you doing? Um, I'll be truthful and honest, if I may, right now. Of course, always. I, I haven't. I've watched all the DVDs quite frequently. Spend a lot of my free time. Yep. The last time I said something in public, I squirmed, and I'm squirming right now. Right. So that's a real, real problem. Yep. However, after what you just said, I yep. stood waiting for the chance, possibly. To convey a message to you yep. from Jackie, my very close friend. A lot of people in this room know her. Yep. Uh, she's actually dying, and we possibly even a fortnight's time she won't be with us. Yep. And she wanted me to tell you. She could have emailed probably about six weeks ago when she first knew, and she felt that that wasn't personal enough. Just emailing you. Yep. And each time I see her, she says. Oh, Jeanette, would you be able to just tell AJ that I'm dying? Uh -huh. Now, I committed today, so now I'm doing it in public because yeah. it's the only way to do it. Yep. And I knew when I was standing there waiting for you for 25 minutes, yep. or whatever it was, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that I was doing something I shouldn't do yep. because you need your food and, you know, just... But I had this commitment now. And this is one of your emotions, Jeanette. And I'm doing it now, and I'm feeling a bit stupid, and I probably That's won't okay. even watch no, the DVD. It's really good that you, you mention this. Oftentimes, we feel drawn into doing things for friends that they will not do for themselves. All right? Now, now this is going to sound really harsh, and, uh, and you should know me well enough by now to know that I'm not a very harsh person, but it's going to sound quite harsh. It doesn't matter if the person's dying or not. Whenever they are demanding something that you do for them that they won't do for themselves or they don't have a desire to do for themselves, they are trying to manipulate and control you. So, so, she is. When she first learned it, she was certainly able. Didn't she not? Six weeks ago, she was certainly able, yeah, but she didn't. Who knows? I might have visited her if she had done so. Agreed? I might have, right? And the question is, why didn't I? Why didn't that happen? Now she's dying from cancer, right? Of the lungs. That's right. Mm. And this is one, something that's also going to sound very harsh. Cancer, we talked about this in a session when we went traveling with cancer. So I did a whole half a, half a thing about cancer. Cancer is a projection, it's a suppressed projection of anger towards other people in order to control them so that you do not have to feel a feeling within yourself. The feeling she has is one of deep grief within herself. This is why it's affecting her chest. Right? She has very deep grief within herself, but she doesn't want to feel it and she wants everyone else to feel it with her or for her, and this is why she has it. And one of the reasons why she asked you this, to tell me this is because she wanted to know why she had it. Yes, that's okay? right. And this is why she has it. Because she's wanting other people to do things for her <coughs> right? And pressurizes them just like she's pressurized you into doing this for her, and it hooks into one of your emotional injuries, which we can talk about in a minute if you want. And what that does is it pushes you into doing something for her because she's unwilling to feel something for herself. Right? And so what I'm saying is if she contacted me six weeks ago, we might have even been able to talk about what the emotion was. And by now, she might not even have the cancer. Because that's how fast things can change if you want to deal with the emotion of it. Right? But this emotion, which is affecting her chest, is relating to sadness that she doesn't want to feel and instead wants to actually control other people rather than feeling this sadness. And so it's a very really angry type of controlling projection she has on others. Now, because she judges her that anger and the control, she would, ne she would find it very hard to admit to that. Do you follow me? And, and you even find it very hard to hear what I'm saying to you about it. 
because you feel that I'm actually being harsh or hard on her. All I'm doing is saying the truth about it. That's all. all right? If you contacted me six weeks ago, we could have talked about this. But, you know, obviously now it's quite advanced, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And always look at when, I, when anybody else tries to get you to do something for them or you feel drawn into doing something for someone else because they seem to want you to do it for them because they don't do it for themselves, there is always some very heavy projections coming at you that you're hooking into through some addiction of your own. Do you understand that? So I can just sit here and project it, I can project at you something about this auditorium and I can project an emotion at you if I choose to do so that if any of you are sensitive, you will, some of you will eventually start to get up and do what I want without me even saying a word. Right? So, for instance, like some of you are a bit cold, some of you are a bit hot. Now I can hook into that and project that you turn off, turn off the turn off the air conditioner. I could just even do a simple thing like that, and one of you eventually will get up and turn off the air conditioner for me. Was I loving to you? No. All right, and I can have to, I, I don't have to say a word, and it can all happen. And I can even think, sometimes, and I've seen people do this, think that that's really great. I'm so powerful. I'm not such a powerful person being able to do that. But it's not harmonious with free will or love of others. So we, got to, we have to look at why we feel so strongly that we can get other people to do things for us. I spent 30 minutes talking to somebody in the break about this issue and she did not want to admit that she was projecting that others should have done things to, for her. Right? And so my suggestion is to look at when you have a desire that others do something for you, look very strongly at what is motivating it inside of them and yourself. So what hook do you have into doing it? So when you might go ahead and do it, what do you feel after it's done? Some of you feel like, oh, I did something for someone. Isn't that wonderful? And feel good about yourself, that kind of thing. Sometimes some of you feel resentment or whatever. But the issue is to look at the emotion, to look at what's going on inside of ourselves when we have these interactions going on with others. What I would like to see is the entire audience here of people actually taking full responsibility for their own lives in every possible way. Full responsibility for your own life materially, full responsibility for your own life with relationships, full responsibility for your own life sexually, full responsibility for your own life in a spiritual sense, in your relationship with God, every single sense. But for many of us, we don't want to do that yet. We want other people to do that for us. Right? And it's a big emotional injury we have on this planet. This is why we have a lot of the problems on the planet with regard to love because we want other people to do things for us all the time that we are unwilling to do for ourselves many of the time, much of the time. 